Hi folks! My name is Daria Volkova and in this video I'll tell you about 8 types of DAOs you must know if you plan to build a community with a wide range of functions and decentralized governance. The success of DAOs in the crypto community results from innovations in blockchain technology such as smart contracts, on-chain governance, empowered community members, redefining how decisions are made, and new organizational and legal structures without a central authority. But not all DAOs are created equal. According to Vitalik Buterin, there are three types of situations where decentralization is essential. Situation number one. Decentralization for making better decisions in environments where pluralism and even naive forms of compromise are on average likely to outperform the kinds of coherency and focus that come from centralization. Situation number two. Decentralization for censorship resistance. Applications that must continue functioning while resisting attacks from powerful external actors. Situation number three. Decentralization as credible fairness. Applications where DAOs are talking on nation-state-like functions like basic infrastructure provision and so traits like predictability robustness and neutrality are valued above efficiency. So, now I will talk about the eight main types of DAOs you need to know. First type of DAOs are protocol DAOs. A protocol DAO is a kind of DAO that is designed to govern a decentralized protocol such as borrow lending application, decentralized exchange, or another type of the app. The most notable protocol DAO example is MakerDAO. MakerDAO uses smart contracts to enable users to lend and borrow cryptocurrencies with customized lending rates and repayable amounts. Next type of DAO is Grant DAOs. Grant DAOs are designed to facilitate non-profit donations, strategically deploy capital assets throughout the Web3 ecosystem and the either a charitable extension of a ledger project or an entirely separate entity in the DeFi space. A Grant DAO is a community-led program to fund ideas and projects that power the development of a protocol, focusing on supporting a more comprehensive network of community developers. A grants allocate a specified amount of funding per quarter. The third type of DAOs are philanthropic DAOs. Philanthropic DAOs aim to help progress social responsibility by organizing around the shared purpose to create an impact in the world of Web3. Ukraine DAO is a great example of the philanthropic DAO. It was created by Alona Shevchenko to support the Ukrainian army and organizations in Ukraine. It's a decentralized autonomous organization built on the Ethereum blockchain, which allows to transparent and secure donations. Ukraine DAO raised over 3 million in Ethereum to support the Ukrainian army in less than a week. Now, Ukraine DAO is focused on the fight against Russian disinformation and propaganda. Guys, if you haven't liked this video and subscribed to the channel, now it's time to do so. And I'm continuing giving you the fourth type of DAO. Social DAO. Social DAOs are focused on the self-organizing community aspect of DAOs by bringing together like-minded individuals such as builders, artists and creatives. Friends with Benefits is a Web3 social DAO focused on building community and fostering creativity. 
Access to friends with benefits is 75 FWB tokens. And once admitted, members have full access to connect with builders, artists, creatives and attend exclusive events. While DeFi are built on the principles of accessibility, many social DAOs derive value from exclusivity, collaboration and interpersonal network effect. The fifth type is Collector's DAOs. The main purpose of Collector DAOs is for members to pull funds together and that the collective community can invest treasury funds in blue chip NFT, art and other collectives. The notable collectors DAO, such as Flamingo DAO, rose with the explosion of NFTs, which collected incredibly expensive NFTs from digital artists like Puck, Hactal, Xcopy and CryptoPunk. The sixth type is Investment and Venture DAOs. Venture DAOs pool capital to invest in early-stage Web3 startups, protocols and off-chain investments and get access to portfolios not available in traditional finance. Krauss House DAO is a Venture DAO trying to buy a professional NBA team that is made up of investors and basketball fanatics. Krauss House DAO members would participate in decisions affecting a national basketball association, teams operating procedures including general management, ticketing, merchandising and partnerships. Seventh type of DAOs is media DAOs. In contrast to a top-down approach where content is produced with a central agenda or influenced by advertisers, media DAOs reinvent traditional media platforms by creating content driven by the community. Bankless DAO is a decentralized community coordinating and propagating bankless media, culture and education. Its goal is to drive the adoption of a truly bankless money system. And eighth type of DAOs is sub-DAOs. A sub-DAO is a new kind of DAO that is a subset of DAO members organized to manage specific functions such as operations, partnerships, marketing, treasury and grants. Balancer Protocol saw an opportunity with its growing DAO membership. It proposed to create sub-DAOs to manage DAO-related decision-making and facilitate execution without requiring every proposal to be passed by the entire DAO. Additionally, I want to share with you an info about the DAO builder Aragon. This project is to build tools for everyone to experiment with governance at the speed of software and deploy the first DAO framework helping thousands of DAOs secure and govern over 6 billion in value. Thousands of DAOs have been built on the top of the Aragon framework since its inception in 2016. Big DAOs like Lido, Decentraland and AP3 use Aragon contracts to vote and store their phones in trusted smart contracts. Now you know about the different types of DAOs. Which one would be the most useful for your Web3 project? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel.